Hey, so um, my name is Alison. I'm one of the operations managers at Nature Track, um, and I've not been there quite as long as Paul. I've been there for about six years, um, so a fair way to go to catch up with him. Um, the tours I'm going to be talking about this evening um, basically take us to the two extremes of our English tours um, that we do, um, talking about Northumberland and then heading right down into the southwest um, into Devon and then down to the Isles of Scilly. Um, so we're going to start up in the north, up at Northumberland. Um, I'm sure most of you know um, Northumberland is right up on the east coast of England, um, as far as you can get up on that side without actually going into Scotland itself. We offer a couple of different tours to here. We offer a six day birding tour and a five day photography tour, um, both of which are set in the summer months, um, particularly to focus on um, the seabirds um, and other visitors that come up during the summertime. Now we stay in one of um, the smaller hotels along in one of the villages um, near the coast and um, with easy access to the different sites that we want to visit. So, Depending on uh, the tour we're on, whether we're on um, birding tour or photography tour, we do visit a variety of different sites, um, but some of them are common between them and also offer um, a good variety of interest um, regardless of where we're going. So starting on some of the local pools um, along the coastal region, um, we'll be looking for a number of waders, um, including species such as avocet, avocet um, perhaps oyster catcher as well. Um, and the pools are also a very good place to look out for herondines, um, so swallows um, and martens, um, as well as a number of different ducks as well. As we're heading round, uh, we'll be looking out for um, bright um, but, um, patches of colour, which are the, um, the local emblem of Northumberland, um, the Bloody Cranes Bill, um, creating um, nice splashes uh, around the countryside um, as we go. One of the days we'll be heading out to Lindisfarne. Uh, we obviously have to time this visit quite carefully um, because the causeway is only um, accessible um, during the low points of the tide. So the day that we visit there will really vary depending on um, which days um, the tide is um, at its lowest. There's plenty of interest out on Lindisfarne, um, historical interest such as um, Lindisfarne Castle, um, but also the Priory um, and other um, buildings of interest as well. For those on the birding tour, it's a great place to do some sea watching and species we'll be looking out for particularly um, include goosander, gannets, uh, perhaps some bar-tailed godwit around the shore. Um, and if we're very fortunate, there may be um, a pod or two of bottlenose dolphin um, playing out in the waves. <laughs> Both on Lindisfarne and around the coastal habitat, um, we'll be looking out for um, orchids um, as well um, as, as birds. Um, the dune habitat and coastal regions are particularly good uh, for a number of different species. Um, perhaps the, um, the, the spikes of the, the lovely northern marsh orchid um, or the more delicate uh, bee orchid that we can find in places as well. These are particularly small and can often be missed if you're not sure what you're looking for. During the photography tour, uh, we take advantage of the, uh, the features around the coast, um, including the castles uh, that are around, um, and they are fantastic places to do some creative photography, and um, perhaps using um, the different stages of, of the tide or pools to create some reflections. In. It's also a very um, interesting part of the coast for different um, rarities turning up um, and some interesting visitors uh, can be found from time to time, um, including um, something, oh, I'm really sorry, that picture doesn't uh, want to come through. Um, last year, our group had uh, species such as redneck stint um, and other waders that can turn up um, during, um, during the spring or summer months as well. During the week, we'll take a couple of boat trips um, on the birding tour, particularly one is out to Coquette Island, uh, where there is a colony of breeding roseate terns, um, very, very elegant birds with their lovely uh, rosy blush um, down their tummy. For many people, a highlight is heading on out to the Farne Islands. Landings on the islands are very, very dependent on weather and also uh, whether access is currently being allowed. But whether or not we're able to land, it's a wonderful place to go to experience um, the seabird colonies. Um, the sound and the noise and the smell of being there is something that's very hard to describe if you've never seen one. 
species we're looking out for um, include the, the puffins, uh, guillemots, razorbills, kittiwakes, shags, and a variety of gulls as well. If we do it onto the islands, you particularly have to watch out for, for these birds, the Arctic tern. They're very territorial and very protective of their nesting spots. So uh, it's usually advised to wear a hat, otherwise you can come away with them. Uh, a little bit of a war wound if you tangle with those um, on the islands. Our birding tour also has a day inland heading up into the Cheviot Hills, where we'll be looking for some upland species, including grouse, ring ousel, whinchat and ravens. Moving on, going right down to the opposite end of the country now, um, talking a little bit about our Devon tours. One of the reasons that we visit Devon, and particularly in South Devon, is the X estuary. It's a fantastic place, um, particularly in the winter and spring months, um, for visiting waders and wildfowl. So water birds such as the avocet and brent geese um, can be found in um, big flocks sometimes um, and again um, can make a fantastic display if they get disturbed and come up in, in a big show. Other ones we'll be looking for um, include the oyster catcher. Um, sometimes it takes um, a little while to appreciate the, the beauty of the birds um, when people who've never seen one before remark on them and we sometimes take them for granted. Also, um, bar-tailed godwit are around, and um, perhaps some um, grey plover, um, dunlin or not, curlew, redshank or greenshank, sanderling or turnstones. A whole lot of different species can turn up there, and we never know quite what we're going to find from year to year and trip to trip. Out on the water, particularly in the winter, we'll come across some of the sort of diving species, um, including Slavonian grebe um, or um, red-throated diver in their winter plumage. Perhaps scoter or red-breasted naganser as well. One of the other um, fish-eating birds, which many people love to see, but much smaller, is the kingfisher. Um, and if we're fortunate, we'll find these. Um, often in the winter months, they um, head down towards the coast. Um, to to um to, there's some sea fishing um so it's a good chance of being able to see them when they gather um there might be a little bit um unapparent but uh, male kingfishers are a blue green and females are a green blue which doesn't sound like much distinction until you see them next to each other and sometimes you can really see the difference between them we also head on our tours out to um, the marshes and heathland areas where we'll be looking for species such as the Dartford warbler. If we're very fortunate, perhaps some surwanting, which are fairly restricted in their range in the UK. Perhaps linnet or some flocks of crossbill as well. On our spring tours, looking out from the points out to sea, uh, we'll be looking out for species um, such as um, Manx shearwater or gannets, perhaps passing in some number. The scrub areas are good eight places to listen and look out for Chetty's Warbler with their explosive song um, and loud call, um, quite uh, remarkable for the size of bird that they are. But we'll also focus on um, some of the other wildlife around as well and, and, um, and not just a fauna, flora too, um, perhaps finding species such as the spring squill with its lovely blue flowers. Again, there's a possibility down here of a para-bordered fertility. Um, and a uh, number of other butterfly species too. Heading out to Dartmoor from here, um, it's a good chance to look out for some more upland species, um, including uh, whinchat and stonechat, perhaps finding some reed bunting in the areas, or perhaps some red grouse. And again, there's a possibility here of nightjar, either hearing or seeing. Back around in the coastal regions, around the X estuary, um, we can find um, other invertebrate species, such as this hairy dragonfly. Um, although we enjoy watching these, um, they make a very tasty snack uh, for some hawking hobbies. On a warm day as well, it may also be possible to find some sand lizards hiding amongst the dune systems. On the north side, at the opposite end of Devon, is Exmoor. 
Um, although our tour to Exmoor doesn't technically um, lie within Devon, it's, it's worth a mention. Um, the Exmoor um, is split between uh, Devon and Somerset. Um, and it's a fantastically ancient landscape uh, defined by geography um, as well as centuries of human influence as well. In the evenings, again, possibilities of nightjar, but perhaps also some owls, such as tawny owl, uh, can be found if we find flat place. Spring's a great time for returning migrants, um, and uh, they come to breed in places like Horner Wood, um, including pied flycatcher and wood warbler, redstart and marsh tit, tree pipit, mistle thrush, bullfinch, often everybody's uh, favourite, um, and willow warbler as well. Around the streams, we'll be looking out for dipper and grey wagtail. Um, grey wagtail with their lovely uh, bobbing motion um, and uh, call as they head overhead. Places like Holscombe are fairly interesting. They are um, a test land management site um, designated for um, the recovery of the Heath Patilly butterfly. Um, and if we uh, time it just right and the conditions are perfect, we may find some of those during our tour as well. Out on the heathland, we'll be looking for species such as cuckoo, merlin, wheat ear, green woodpecker and red pole. And there's also mammals on the moor as well, including uh, large um, herds of red deer, one of the larger herds of red deer within the UK. Native Exmoor ponies, which are one of the most ancient breeds um, in the world, um, and perhaps brown hare as well. Moving on again, going right, right out, um, way off the coast of the mainland, um, right off the southwest point lie the Isles of Scilly. Never the Scilly Isles, I've been told, always the Isles of Scilly. It's an island archipelago which is made up of five main islands, um, St Mary's, Tresco, Briar, St Agnes and St Martin's. It's a stunning location, um, often known to, for its sparkling blue seas um, and gloriously sandy beaches. The warmer climate is influenced by the Gulf Stream, um, which has the effect of making it um, a good place for raising exotic plants, such as those found um, in the Tresco Abbey Gardens, um, and also uh, well known for the cut flower industry. We offer a spring trip, particularly looking for flowers, um, as well as a visit to the gardens. We'll be looking for some of the more wild species as well, and perhaps um, something like coming across this field of brilliant red poppies. Some species are more common here than on the mainland, um, but there's also um, some that are um, less, that are scarce here. Um, but among the species we'll look for um, include uh, the western ramping fumitory, the small flowered catchfly, or perhaps the lovely altar lilies. There are a couple of very local specialities uh, which can be found on the islands too, including the least adder's tongue, fern, um, and the dwarf pansy, which is a very, very diminutive little plant uh, with uh, flowers often being only a few millimetres across. There's plenty of other wildlife to be found there too, um, including uh, species that, that uh, will um, feed on the flowers, um, including small tortoiseshell and painted lady. And there's a very local variation of the speckled wood butterfly as well. And we might find something um, that's a bit more uh, ground based, such as um, this stunning minotaur beetle. On the boat trips between islands, um, it's possible to find um, marine species, including grey seal, perhaps some common dolphin, um, maybe in a little pod or perhaps um, in a large family group, and maybe one or two um, harbour porpoise as well, or something a little bit more unusual, like the ocean sunfish. And you're not going to be able to ignore the seabirds. They are um, going to be um, all around you. Um, and we also run a tourist to the Isles of Scilly that are particularly uh, for, for birds, both in the springtime and the autumn. The spring is when you're going to most notice the seabirds. And we're we'll looking for species such as gannet, guillemots, and razorbills, um, and perhaps everyone's favourite, uh, the puffin as well. As with anywhere in the UK, 
weather can be a little bit changeable. Um, we can have some fantastically uh, sunny weeks um, where almost every day is uh, glorious blue skies um, and warm weather. But other days it may be a little bit damp, but regardless of that, there's still plenty of birding to be enjoyed. Due to its location, it can often end up with some very unusual visitors, and particularly during migration times. In the pools, um, like uh, both Paul and Tom were talking about in um, the um, Somerset levels and um, other places like that, uh, you can have some European species turn up, um, such as purple heron, um, little bittern, um, and a number of other water birds. Some rare waders that our groups have seen in the last couple of years um, include species such as beards or petrel sandpipers. Rails are also possible as well, um, including the uh, lovely spotted crake uh, that can be found as well. More typical migrants though um, include meadow pipit and wheat ear, black cap and white throat, um, and it's quite a, um, it's not so unusual to find um, and the less common ones from the mainland, such as the yellow bride warbler here, which can come through in some numbers, particularly in the autumn time. But wherever you happen to go on the Isles of Scilly, and whatever you're going to be doing, you're sure to find that there is some fantastic scenery around you. Right from the moment when you arrive to the moment you get back on the ferry in St Mary's to head home. And even then, there'll still be some seabirds and perhaps some marine life to spot on the way home. It's also possible to fly to join the tour, um, and we're very happy to look into that for anyone who wants to know more about those kind of options. So that's been a little bit of a brief overview of some of our tours um, that we offer here. Um, and I just want to say thank you very much for listening. And um, if you've got any questions, um, do feel free to pop them in the question and answer section, um, and we'll try and answer them for you. <laughs>